my name is Heidi Waters and I am the Science Director at the Toledo Institute for Development and Environment located in Southern Belize in the Toledo District. The Port Honduras Marine Reserve is approximately 100,000 acres in size. It is one of three protected areas that tide manages within the Maya Mountain Marine Corridor and it incorporates a number of important ecosystems including mangrove keys, estuaries, seagrass meadows, and fringing coral reefs and patch reefs. The Port Honduras Marine Reserve reefs are very important commercially. They not only benefit the local community, but the wider economy of Belize itself. Coral reefs in Belize generate approximately 15% of the GDP. Shallow water coral reefs are beautiful and ecologically diverse ecosystems. They are not only beautiful, but they host a wide variety of aquatic organisms. They are called the rainforests of the sea. It's not only because they are beautiful, but because they require specific physiological and environmental conditions for optimum growth. They have the Goldilocks syndrome, where they need environmental conditions that are not too high, too low, but just right. The corals themselves rely on single-celled algae. The algae provide food for them through photosynthesis, and the corals provide the algae shelter. Coral bleaching is a stress response where corals lose their symbiotic algae either because of high water temperatures or water temperatures which are too high for too long or even coral diseases. Coral can survive in this state for some weeks but after that it will die. In this case the coral's flesh will begin to rot and fleshy macroalgae will start to compete for the space left by the coral. Other broad stressors which influence coral bleaching are overfishing, water pollution, and other various effects caused by climate change such as an increase in ocean acidity and as well as the aforementioned high water temperatures. Coral bleaching is a threat to PHMR, so tide monitors to see what is happening to the coral. Why monitor bleaching? Because if the corals bleach and then die, then there is a threat of losing reef fish as well. We have found that coral bleaching is happening more frequently than it was in the past, and it was really bad in 2017. And with funding from GCFI, MPA Connect, and NOAA, we collaborated with Tide um, in 2018 to follow up on the bleaching events um, that we experienced in Belize in 2017. 2017 was one of the most severe bleaching events that Belize has seen in almost a decade. And so we were able to do some follow-up surveys in 2018 and show that um, actually in 2018 we had uh, nowhere near as severe bleaching as we did in 2017. One of the take-home messages um, from doing bleaching surveys for over 10 years in Belize is that almost every year there is some sort of bleaching event, but it differs in severity and it differs sometimes from north to south in severity. And one of the questions we wanted to answer, or at least look at, is um, are there some sites that are more resilient than others? There is good news. Though there was an unprecedented coral bleaching event in 2017, the least affected area countrywide was PHMR. Also, 2018, PHMR showed better overall coral health and even potential coral resiliency in comparison to other areas of the country. So we are on the right track. All community members and stakeholders need to take this threat seriously and do everything they can to aid in coral resiliency and comply with regulations. I believe that all the, the, the stakeholders and especially the, uh, the immediate stakeholders who are the, the commercial fishers and the, the, the tourism industry, I think we need to be very careful, just like how the, the, the commercial fishers need to be careful how they go about uh, doing their, their daily activity. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, with the tourism, they need, they need to also be, um, be aware and conscious of what they are doing and uh, need to ensure that uh, our practices are not uh, harming our, our coral. Corals are sensitive to environmental change and are fragile environments. They have survived for millions of years and can survive these bleaching events if they are given the protection that they need. What can stakeholders do to protect coral health? Well, one, they can continue their commitment to managed access fishing practices. They can promote sustainable fishing and avoid overfishing and overharvesting of fish. 
Second, they can provide protection to algae eating uh, fish on the reefs, such as the parrotfish, the damselfish, the angelfish, and the surgeonfish. These fish eat algae that, out, that uh, compete with corals. A third way that they can help uh, promote coral health and resiliency is to, to demand good water quality practices by their government, by businesses, and by their community members. Pollution such as coastal runoff and agricultural runoff and even sewage drainage can turn a coral reef into an algae reef. Um, lastly, though we don't have control over the temperature of oceans, stakeholders can address global warming and climate change by helping and monitoring these bleaching events and informing adaptive management when they occur. We want PHMR to survive coral bleaching when this happens again. So let's protect our reefs and keep them strong and resilient.